All right, hello everybody. So I am back and today we are going to paint a snow leopard. So I already started with my drawing, kind of a rough drawing of it. So there's the drawing. I just did this in graphite, All right? So there's kind of the outline of the cat. This is the snow leopard. And then here is my reference photo, which is a great photo, very clear. And uh, what I like about this is the clearness of the the face here and then how it kind of blurs out here on the body and kind of in the ears, but very clear on the face. So there is the photo that is a snow leopard. Okay, and so I transfer that over into a drawing. This is on a piece of 12 by 16 Arches cold press oil paper. And I'll show you the paper right here. This is what it looks like. You can get it in at your art store. Sometimes I'll have it in the oil painting aisle or section, and it's meant for oil paint. And you can see it's 12 by 16, 100% cotton, 140 pound paper, so it's nice and thick. And um, it's got a grain to it, a texture to it, which I like. And it's meant for oil painting, but it actually works really great for oil pastel. It has that bit of a texture, and the thickness of the paper has a membrane inside the paper that doesn't allow um, liquids or fluids or oil or something to seep through to the other side. So it's nice, thick, durable paper. I've used it quite a bit. One of my favorite papers to use. It's affordable and it's got a nice 12 by 16 size. So highly recommend this paper if you want something with a little bit of texture in it um, instead of the Bristol Smooth paper or a smooth surface. I'd recommend using the Arches Cold Press Oil Paper. I believe they also have a watercolor paper, watercolor version. I haven't tried that yet, um, but I imagine it's probably just as good. So that's what this is here. Arches Cold Press. Highly recommend for oil pastel. Works great. Okay, so I did a rough drawing of this, and um, I want to show you what I used to help me with scaling my drawing. So if I want to scale a drawing from, say, my iPad or my iPhone onto a larger piece of paper here. This is my iPad and then my 12 by 16 uh, paper here. How do you do that? Well, I use what's called a proportional divider and that's what this that, that's what this tool is. And this is, you can get this in your drawing section of your art store. I actually got this at Amazon. Um, came in this little tube and it helps you scale your drawings from, from a smaller reference to a larger or vice versa. So basically how this works is you have this um, you have two sides of it. You have this side, which is the smaller, and then I can change this. I can take this little pin out and I can move this back and forth depending on how much I want to scale it. But basically what you do is you go to your photo reference and you say, okay, what is the distance between the eyes? So let's say I go to the corner of the eyes here and I take these two points and I match them up to the corner of the eyes. And I'm just using this as an example. And then it converts it over to the larger uh, dimension on this side. So if I take it to here, from corner to corner of the top of the eye there, and I come over to my reference, and then I use the larger ones, you can see how that lines up, right? So I take it from corner to corner, and then I match it here. And I'll just make like a little dot here, and then I'll kind of draw the, the rest of the eye out. That helps me get the scale right. Another way to do it, so let's say, let's go to the width of the nose. So here's the width of the nose here on that kind of the, the widest part of the nose from side to side. And I just kind of match those two points up here with these. And then I come to over here and I flip it and then I'm able to mark those points here on the paper. And you can see how that matches up, all right? And you can do all points on the, on the reference. So if I want to go to the top of the head from where the ear starts off the top of the head, see the ear starts up here. And then the other ear starts right there. I can kind of match those two points up there with on this side, the smaller side. And then I flip it, and then I can match those points up here. So this kind of gives me a rough idea to be able to scale it. And I'll kind of make it like a little mark there, and then I'll kind of draw it out, and then I'll kind of remeasure to make sure I got those dimensions correctly. And that's basically how I drew this out. I made those little points and then kind of like connected the dots. And you can see the drawing, how it's real loose. You can see I just went over very with a graphite pencil and um, so no clean lines. I just kind of scrubbed it in with a pencil 
and kind of correct it in some areas just to give me kind of a good estimate of how to scale it. The most important part of doing animal portraits or, you know, faces of people and stuff like that is really the relationship between the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Right in here is where you're going to get likeness. Okay, so I have to make sure that my corners, where the corners match up, match up to my reference, where the outside of the eyes match up from here to here, matches up to the reference, and the relationship between that and where the nose begins and ends, and then where the mouth is. Okay, that's where likeness is, comes into play right here. And then you just kind of fill in the other parts. Like you notice up in here, if you see the fuzziness part of the ear right here, see all these kind of hairs that are kind of real fuzzies? That's what that is. It's just kind of a fuzzy, fuzzy indication there. So I just kind of take my pencil and I just kind of make these little fuzzy marks there. Okay. So I highly recommend this for, for just getting this process done quickly um, and easily. You can use a proportional divider. I use it quite a bit on when I do animal portraits. It's a great tool to use. Highly recommend it. And then I can adjust it. So if I wanted, if I was working on a bigger piece of paper here, I could adjust this and make this point wider compared to this point. So you can move this, you basically take this little slider off and I just move this, the, the axis point right here and I can move this up and down here and I can say, let's say I want a little bit big, bigger piece of paper, put it in there and then that just makes this part bigger compared to this. So if I did it this way, there's the corner of the eyes and then here you would see what the difference that is. The corners of the eyes would start here or here. Okay, so that's just basically a great tool for you guys to use. Highly recommend it. Anything that makes the drawing process, the painting process easier, just do it. All right, don't need to impress anybody. Just to knock off the hard parts, you can just do that real quick. I'm gonna actually put this back where it was. I think it was down here a couple notches. And I'm just gonna move this, and match it up again. That's where it was, so that's where it is. That's where my focal access point here is on the proportional divider. Okay, so I highly recommend to get this tool. I use it quite a bit. It really helps out with speeding up your drawings. Okay, so I did this in a pencil, just a little graphite pencil, just um, this right here, basically. I just kind of, you know, kind of scrubbed it around. Just, just not to be exact, just kind of where, just general where, the, where things are, the width of the face. The muzzle, you know, where the nose is, where the eyes are. Obviously, the most important part is the, the relationship with the eyes and the nose and the mouth. That's the most important area to get correct. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is before I start with oil pastels, I'm going to put a workable fixative over this to lock in the drawing so it doesn't smear around when I'm applying oil pastel at the top. And of course, I'm just going to go with the Krylon workable fixative. Um, and that will prevent the drawing from smearing as I'm applying the oil pastel. Another thing I want to note here is right now I have my iPhone attached to my chest. So when I move my body, the camera moves. Okay, and I can kind of pull it away from my chest like this so I can step back or I can you can see my hands here. This is how most of my videos are and I've gotten some marks comments about it like some people really like this way some people don't like it the way this way they find the movement too distracting and they're unable to watch i like it this way because i'm able to then get the camera and actually you can see like when i go with oil pastel you'll be able to see where the oil pastel touches the paper by doing it this way that's why i like it because i think when it comes to instruction i think it's a little easier to follow along i understand the movement is not what people like. I get that. Uh, that can be very distracting. So for this video, I'm going to start off this way with the camera attached to my chest, just like you see here. Now try to be careful. I will I'll try not to move too much. I know when I come here and go to my oil pastels, you're going to get that movement. Okay. And I sometimes I'll sway when I'm drawing. I kind of move around. I'll try to remain still. It's very hard. Sometimes when I'm when I'm blending, the camera kind of shakes like this. So I'll, I'll try to keep it as still as I can. I'm wearing basically a chest harness and I have this the iPhone attached to my chest. After I finish the first layer, which I'm gonna do in Cray Paws, I'm just gonna cover up the, the white of the paper. After I'm done with that, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to switch 
and put my camera on the tripod right here. And I'm going to angle it, and that'll be a stationary camera, right? And we're going to flip to portrait mode when that happens. And so this video is going to change as we go through it. Because I want you guys to see it both ways. I want you to see it this way, camera on my chest. And then we're going to do the rest of the painting when it's attached to my tripod in a stationary format, okay? And then if you can leave a comment on this video on which way you prefer, I would really appreciate that. And whatever comments I get the most, I'll probably start doing my videos in that format. Okay, so I would really appreciate it if you could just leave me the feedback. Just let me know if you prefer camera on the chest like this, or if you prefer the camera on a stationary tripod like this where it's not gonna move, okay? So just leave a comment um, if you watch this. I would really appreciate that. Okay, so first step here is we have to cover up the graphite with the workable fixative first. That's the first thing we got to do. So I'm just going to do that right here. And uh, any workable fixative will work for that. <clears throat> I'm just using this Krylon. This, this is a great product to use. Pretty inexpensive. Just shake it up. And I'm going to move my iPad here because I don't want fixative to go on my iPad. Because it's kind of spray out. And I'm going to hold my breath while I do this. And then I'm going to leave my studio for about 10 minutes. And then we'll come back and making sure we have enough coverage. Okay, so first step, cover with workable fixative. So this is what the chest harness looks like. And it snaps here on the sides. And then I just put my iPhone right in here, landscape mode, and it just stays there. Okay, so I did the f workable fixative. And uh, I wait about 10 minutes for that to dry up. Doesn't really take that long, but I, ju I just wait for that. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub my hands over it, making sure it doesn't smear, making sure nothing comes up. Okay. And then when you apply workable fixative to paper, that kind of develops a little bit of a gritty feel to it, depending on how much you use, which is good because that'll help me get more layers. And so pretty good. It's all covered up. Nothing's coming up on my fingers. So we're ready to begin. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just look at the reference again. Okay, so there's the cat. There is the cat, snow leopard, obviously mostly gray, right? Different shades of gray. But if I had to pick one color for this cat, it would be gray. Right? It's even got like a grayish background like a darker grayish background, All right? But right now we're just gonna worry about the cat itself. So I'm gonna pick one color to start with, and I'm gonna start with a Cray Paws medium gray. That's what this is right here. I start with my hardest consistency the oil pastel first, not the soft stuff. Harder first, which is Cray Paws. And that's out of my whole set here. This is all Cray Paws up in this section right here. So I just take a, a medium gray like this, and I'm just going to cover where the cat is, and I'm gonna stay within my lines, okay? So I'm just gonna take the gray like this, and I'm trying to keep the camera still here, and I'm trying to keep the focus of the camera on the work, so I have to keep reminding myself that as I do this. But basically, I'm gonna stay within the lines and just cover the white of the paper, okay? Just kinda of go around, cover it up, Maybe in some areas like this, I might use the edge of it kind of to draw where kind of the angle of the ear and how it changes from this part to this part here. And then maybe where the fuzzy parts here, maybe I'll do something like that. But the goal here is just to cover the white. Okay. So we'll go over here. This is where kind of the ear touches the head. It's just a change here. Kind of do a line there to tell to tell me that, and then just cover the white of the paper. Stay within the lines. All right, keep going. 
You can see the texture. I'll get it up close so you can see what the texture of the paper does with the oil pastel. This is not the smooth surface. This is not like Bristol smooth. Okay, you can see the texture of the paper as I'm just taking the broad side of the stick here. Obviously, I have my papers off, and then I just use that whole broad side, or at least this part of it right here in the front. And you can see how I'm holding, holding the oil pastel. This allows for easy coverage. Allows me to go and just kind of fill it up with this gray. All right. When I get to the edges, I might kind of go towards more of the stick like this and kind of put a little bit more pressure to get like a darker line right there, just to let me know where that is. Okay, this is where the muzzle part, you know, around the mouth, the muzzle, I guess, of this cat kind of meets the rest of the face. There's a line there. There's a sep there's a sep there's a difference here I can see in the in the values of the colors. I'm just going to use a line here to mark where that is. I'm also going to use a line here to mark where the eyeball is. Okay, because as soon as I start covering it up, all my lines from the graphite are going to get covered up. So I got to know where those are. Okay, I'll just use the gray to kind of help me out with that. This is going to be kind of black area. I'll just kind of color it in with the gray for right now. Same with over here, this eye. Keep those dimensions white, where they were when I put it in the pencil, right? Eyes should line up pretty, pretty easily right there. Kind of go down to the nose and again, the edge of the muscle on this side of the face. Right, so I'm just kind of going over my lines using kind of the edge of the stick here, putting a little bit of pressure down to get a darker mark, and then using the broad side of the stick to fill in the white of the paper. Right, and the nose is a different color. It's kind of this pinkish color. We might grab a pink for that, because I don't know if I want to go with gray on top of that and then just fill out the rest of this face of the cat, right? Basically, you're just going over your drawing with the oil pastel. Right, now, before I continue, let's do this part right here, the chin. Okay, and there's the chin, there's a darker part right there. And then we have the rest of the body, which is really out of focus, but we'll put a little bit of gray down in here as well. just like that okay so you can see i covered it up all right i leave the eyes alone you notice i didn't do anything with the eyes the eyes are the last thing i'm going to do i always leave the eyes last you can do it differently you can do the eyes first if you want whatever works for you i like to leave the eyes last but whatever works for you just do it the way that you've done it whatever works there's the nose, the nostrils, okay. Nose kind of has like this triangle shape to it. You can see the triangle shape. Also, if you look at the eyes, the eyelid here and then the corner and then the, the way the eye goes down, it's kind of like this right angle here. You can see this angle here. It's almost like a 90 degree right angle there. And then you got the elliptical shape of the eye underneath. Right, same with this side over here. You almost got this almost right angle on this side. This is at an angle, so it's not as squared off as this one is. Okay, now let's take my finger and let's just kind of rub this and see what it looks like when I start trying to rub it around. Okay, you can see how it changes when I do that with just my fingers, all right? But that's kind of hard to do. I mean, it's going to take a lot of oil pastel and then with my fingers, and that's just very cumbersome. So to make this process faster, I'm going to go with a brush and terpenoid. There's terpenoid in here, and this is just a hog bristle brush. The terp is this stuff right here, odorless terpenoid. Excellent. Okay, for oil pastel, works great. Doesn't have a smell, at least I can't smell anything. So no strong odors. If you're sensitive to that, definitely get the odorless terpenoid. And I'm just gonna take the brush, I'm gonna dip it into that terp, 
wipe off a little bit of the excess here and I'm just going to go right over this and I'm going to help spread this oil pastel around. Okay. And that'll just help me cover all the white of the paper, right? I can get through that texture very easily with this method rather than trying to blend with my fingers. Okay, so this speeds up the blending process, at least on the first layer. And I'll do this on the first layer just to cover up the paper, right? And you can see a little goes a long ways. I can just kind of keep spreading this around. Be careful when I get to the edges, making sure I don't go past my lines. Okay, if you need a smaller brush, that's fine, whatever, whatever works. I recommend a, a stiff bristle brush rather than soft, as the stiffness of the brush helps with cutting into the oil pastel and helps with, with spreading that out. If it's too soft, it's gonna be a little, a little bit more work. All right, again, covering up the white of the paper all the white, I don't want any spaces of white showing in there. Okay. Now, not all papers are good to use with a terp because what will happen if you're using a very thin paper, the terp's gonna bleed through to the other side and you're gonna have a wet side on the, on the back side of the paper. That's why the papers that I like to use, like this Arches Cold Press and the Pastel Mat and then the Bristol Smooth, they're thick, durable papers. Okay, 140 pound, 180 pound even on some of them. Thicker the better, okay? That way your oil and your liquid, if you're using a terp, doesn't bleed through the other side of the paper and doesn't deteriorate your paper. So I always, I just stay away from the thinner papers from, for what I do. Okay. Some areas you can see I added a little, little bit less oil pastel, like right here in the top of the eye, like where the eyebrow is. Some I add a little bit darker to kind of get the darkness of the eye area, All right? Again, one color, just to kind of get things where they, where you really want to be, and then just use a brush like this to spread it around. Here's where the face meets the rest of the body. So you can see I made a darker mark there to help to tell me and help me where that is. Here's where the muzzle meets where the face is to tell me where that is, right? And this is all depending on my reference picture over here. Yeah, you can kind of see where the muzzle here meets the rest of the face over here. And same over here, you can kind of see it right in here. You can see roundness of here okay and I just go around and help spread it around now on the Bristol smooth paper I don't really need to use the turp at all I can just do this with my fingers very easily um, but I don't know if I have a video showing the Archer's Cold Press. I don't know if I do or not. So I thought I'd try a different paper for you guys so you can see a difference in application and stuff and what, what, how, how much paper plays and um, the role that it plays in, in when, you're, when you're working with oil pastels. All right, paper, paper surface makes a huge difference on how, how it works. So this would be very difficult to do by hand. I would have, I would spending a lot of time here just trying to blend this out with my fingers or a stump and it would just take a lot longer. This is a very fast way of spreading that color. All right, let's keep going. This is where kind of where the nose is. You can kind of see it right here. Spread that out. This cat is mostly just shades of different kinds of grays. So, and there's some like yellow grays and darker grays and some like white almost or very light gray. So we're kind of going to stay in that, 
that range um, of different grays. And then of course we have the nice, the yellow, like the lemon yellow eyes. And I'll save those eyes for last. So I imagine this video, this whole tutorial is probably gonna be close to four to five hours, I'm guessing. Um, that's my guess, I don't know. So it's probably gonna be broken up in either four or five parts, all real time. I'm not gonna time lapse anything here. I think doing um, real time like this is just more instructional. I think you'd learn more. Of course, you have to have the patience to watch something like this, right? <laughs> and there, and time lapse is cool. I do have a couple of time lapse stuff on my on my YouTube, um, but that's not really for for teaching or showing or explaining thing explaining things. So it's more for show. At least in real time, you can see the process in real time. And I kind of, I try to verbalize what I'm thinking so, so you understand my thought process while I go through something, right? Because all of it's pretty much mental, getting past the mental blocks. Okay, so you see you got the face done. Left the nose alone because I'm going to use a pink there. I left the eyes alone. Let's go down to the rest of the body. And this should be a lighter gray than the face because I didn't put as much oil pastel down in this area. I kind of left it. So there should be a little bit lighter than the rest of the face. But the area of the body is going to be really blurred out. Where I'm going to keep the tight details right in here. And then the rest of it is going to kind of get blurred out as I spread out. I kind of want to follow how the reference picture looks. So let's look at that reference picture. And this is a good time to get a screenshot. If you're watching, get a screenshot of that. You can see where the tight details are in the face right here. You can see how it blurs out the body and how it kind of blurs out on the ears. Kind of want to do that with the, with the painting as well. I like that effect. It'll make the cat kind of pop out of the pop out of the paper here. So make it more of a realistic looking. Make it more realistic looking. Okay, you can see there's very little gray here. I'm just kind of spreading whatever I have down there and just kind of spreading that around. I'm obviously gonna, obviously gonna go with a lot more layers and as I go through this, but first layer is just, just cover it up. Try to cover up as much as that white paper as you can. That way when you go over it, you're not battling that, pros that part of it. Okay, and this is the part of video where I have the iPhone attached to my chest. So, and then we'll, after this, after this layer, I'm going to move it over to the tripod here and just kind of focus in right in, right on the subject here. Here, and you'll see the difference. And, and you guys just give me a comment. If you're watching this, give me a comment on what you prefer, right? And what, whatever gets the most most on that that's probably what I'm gonna go with I always have to keep in my mind I'm reminding myself keep camera still keep don't move around don't sway the body try to keep as still as possible but sometimes I just forget because I get so involved in the painting that I just kind of forget that and I'll tend to move a little bit so okay all right I think that's that's pretty good let's go ahead and stop with that so Turp in a brush goes a long ways. I used a little bit more turp than I needed, so I'll just leave this in here and save it for another painting. And then there, that's it. That's the only brush I'll use. And then we have the gray. And then we have this background here, and that's kind of a dark. Maybe let's do that. Let's do it. Let's see if we can find a dark. Maybe I'll use this brown. Maybe a brown and a gray together will help me get kind of a darker gray, since I don't really have a dark gray with the crepe paws. So I'm going to come in with this kind of brown, this medium brown right here. We'll scrub that in in the background section. I 
right, and let's put some gray on top of it, tone it a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna move the easel down so I can keep my camera there on the work. Okay, just using the cray paws, medium brown, medium gray. And we'll do the background here so we're not working on the white background here. At least you have something there. Okay, so there's brown. Just wanna make sure I don't get brown into the cat. If I do, it's not a, a big deal. I can always just cover it up with more layers of oil pastel, but just try to keep these two separate there, and then we'll put a little gray on top of that. And that should give me a darker background than what the cat is. Okay. I can even add a green. I do see a little green back in there, so maybe we'll add a little green. So now I'm using these three, so this is just, you can see the type of green that is. Okay, this is another cray pause. We'll put a little green in there, here and there. Just kind of what I see in the reference. I see a little green in the back. Okay, there we go, that's good. Now let's take that brush again and the turp and we'll spread that out. You can see what the turp does. Really cuts right into that oil pastel and really spreads it out nice and easy. Saves a ton of time in the blending process, which is one of the big hurdles to understanding or how to work with oil pastels, how to blend it, how to move the color, how to cover wide areas like this in a matter of short time. A turp and a brush really helps you with that. Saves on your fingers, saves the amount of oil pastel that you'll be using, Just remember to have a nice, thick, durable paper. Watercolor paper works for that. This oil press, this uh, Arches oil paper, cold press oil paper works great. Pastel mats, great. The Bristol smooth paper works good for this method. You want a thick paper. That's the key, thick paper. And you can save yourself some time with this. And in frustration. Okay. Because at this point, I'm, I'm basically painting. It's almost like a paint. All right, but for those first layers, it um, really saves time. That might be a little bit more brown than what I was going for, but that's okay. We'll keep adding more to it as we go through it. But for right now, just cover the white up. Try not to go over the cat with the brown. But right up to the edge there. Okay. And I put a little green in there and it's not really, it shows a little bit, but not too much. We'll add a little bit more green later on. going almost done now this process um, this layer here is going to take a while to dry out I'm, I can, I'm going to give it a good 30 minutes for it to totally dry out because I want it to be dry I can't have a wet surface and then start putting more oil pastel in it it just doesn't really work well so after this I will take about a 30 minute break I'm actually going to um, eat a lunch here and then I'll come back in about 30 minutes and then we'll start really working out the cat, working in those details. Get, I'm gonna get a ton of layers in this and really change. It's really gonna change a lot from here, okay? And at that point, I'll have the camera over here on the tripod when we get to that part of the video here. 
All right, pretty much there, right? I mean, it's all covered. All the white of the paper is covered except for the nose area, which is going to be a pink. And then the eyeballs, the eyes here, I just leave white. I always leave the eyes last. It's one of the last things I do is do the eyes. Okay, make sure I get up into the edges. All right, so the surface is really wet. Um, I can kind of rub it off almost with my finger. So I have to wait a good 30 minutes for that turp to dry up. Okay, so I will be back here in 30 minutes. For me, 30 minutes. For you guys, no time will pass. All right, but that's what we have so far. So that's a good start. All right, I'll be back. So I waited a good, actually, 45 minutes here, and I just kind of... What I do is I touch it, right? And it should feel a little chalky. And then um, if you just do a light rub on it, it should be a little chalky. The paper should feel dry as well. So definitely um, on the cat, it is pretty much mostly dry. Most of that is dried up. Um, I get a little bit of color up. Over here in the background, a little bit wet, especially right in here. You can see the wetness there on my finger. Okay, so this area is a little bit too wet. I think up here is a little bit too wet. So I'm not gonna work on the background right away. I'll let that dry, but we'll start on the cat. Okay, and I wanted to show you the palette. So I pulled some grays out. And you can see we have different variations. We have kind of like crema color, crema. That's a neo pastel. Different shades of gray. Most of these are neo pastels. There's a couple Mungios in here. This is a Mungio. Kind of medium gray, right? These are Mojos here, kind of a lighter gray. These are the Neo Pastels, these kind of lean, kind of a tannish color, tan color, but it's considered a gray. And then we have these ash grays um, or warm gray. It's got a tint of yellow into it, and that's a Van Gogh. Okay, and then we have some Sens, right? different consistency of what's oil pastel. I have some grays that kind of lean to the green side here, those two. And then, so I'm kind of just pulling out the grays I think I'll be using and uh, see how that works out. I just wanted to show you the palette so you see the colors here that I'm working with. The variations of gray that I'm using and the more of that you have, the better and easier this will be for you. This is a black gray pause we'll use. I do use black when I uh, in portraits. That's just a black crepaz expressionist. Um, but most of these are either neo pastels, maybe one or two Mungio galleries, and then I do have a couple or one of uh, the Van Goghs. But I would say the majority of these are neo pastels. Okay, so just take a look at that. Take a look at the variations of gray I'm using. All right. The different brands allow me more color range, okay? Because each brand kind of comes with their own range of colors. Here's a here's a gray that kind of leans to the blue. Maybe we'll use that at uh, um, Mungio Gallery, I believe. Okay, leans to the blue side, you can see that. So we have some cooler grays, medium grays, warm grays, and a black. I'm probably gonna stay for most of this painting, probably right in here. I might pull some other stuff, maybe some blues or something as we go further this. But what I'll try to do is I'll try to put the color of the stick in front of the camera so you can see what I'm using. Because right now I'm going to go to the tripod and we're gonna have the camera up in here for the rest of this tutorial, okay? And we'll see how that works out.